Welcome to the Sales Lead Dog Podcast, hosted by CRM technology and sales process expert, Christopher Smith, talking with sales leaders that have separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Listen to find out how the best of the best achieve success with their team and CRM technology. And remember, unless you are the lead dog, the view never changes. Welcome to Sales Lead Dog. Today on Sales Lead Dog, I have joining me Corrine LeBlanc. Corrine, welcome to Sales Lead Dog. Hi. Thank you so much for inviting, Chris. Uh, I'm excited to have you here. So Corrine is VP of Sales for iAir, um, and she's also an author, a speaker, a coach, and a trainer. So you can see why I wanted Corrine to come on Sales Lead Dog. So very excited to have you here, Corrine. Thank you so much. Very excited to be here on a beautiful Friday afternoon. Oh, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, Kareem, tell me a little bit about iAir. Yeah, iAir, um, we actually make the world a better place. Nice. Seriously. Uh, we make a difference. And this is why I really like to work for this company. What we do is we're a manufacturer of air conditioning equipment. And we have a unique solution where we actually use the sun to help save energy and save the planet. So we do have a solar air conditioning unit. And we also uh, do some customization as well to in improve the indoor air quality into buildings where you have a big requirements of a lot of outside air infiltration. Yeah, that's a big deal. Um, especially these days, it, you know, anything you can do to make uh, things more energy efficient, that's very important. Absolutely. That so makes selling so much easier. <laughs> oh, it sure does. Tell me about the book. Oh, the book is a, it's a personal project. And it's going to be, I'm celebrating my second year or two year anniversary on January 28th of nice. this year, 2024. Wow, 2024, I said it. And uh, yeah, this personal project, um, it was really near to my, uh, dear or near to my heart? How do we say that in English? I still, I still struggle. Very at, dear, near dear and dear, my, or near okay. and dear. Yeah. Okay. Very important to my heart. Very important <laughs> for me. Uh, I Working as an engineer, mechanic, I'm a mechanical engineer, working with engineers, I felt like we were so focused on the technical part of uh, the job or in life in general. And we had the tendency to forget about the, the human side. So I decided I can talk about it. I can do a lot of conference presentation, but I'm going to be limited into my reach. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, if I write a book, then I have a chance to actually spread my message to the world so much easier. And uh, people can read it. They can listen to it. Uh, they can have it on their Kindle. So this is where it came. And I wanted to share a little bit of my story. So my mm -hmm. book is very personal, a lot of example. And uh, my poor family, there is a lot of example with them as well. But it's all good. They love it. Yep. So, that, so was, that, that was the whole goal. So the title of the book, um, How to Be Human in a Technical World. How did you come up with that title? Uh, again, um, being an engineer and working with engineer, the how-to was very important, right? Because you can talk about any subject and they're going to be, okay, it's all good, but how do I do this? Right. So I, for me, how to be uh, human in a technical world was the perfect uh, subject line, basically. And actually, right. I have it uh, next to yeah, me. Yeah, let's see it. If I show it? Yes. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, it's a great picture. I love the color or cover. It's great. Yeah, thank you so much. That was another topic of discussion with my yeah. uh, my my book coach about are we going to put my picture or not? And I was like, yeah, I'm a female in an engineering world, in a men's world. Yes, yeah. I'm putting my picture. <laughs> well, it's human too, right? If you're not yes. on there, you have to have your picture on there. So I, that's what I really liked immediately to me. I became a little bit more attached to the book just having your because I knew who who wrote it, right? Yes. Oh my God. Thank you so much for saying that. It's good feedback. Yeah. 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 What was the toughest part about writing the book? Uh to organize all my thoughts. And um I talk about it in the book a little bit, but I come from a family where we don't really ask for help. 
Mm. So we're a family that we're very strong. We don't show emotions and uh, we don't ask for help. And after that, we may complain when some, nobody else ha- helped us, of course. Yep. But um, for so through the years, I learned to ask for help. And so before writing this book, I actually look for a book coach. So with that help, then I was like, okay, I've got all of this. How do I do it? Right. So that was the toughest part was not knowing what to do. But then I reached for help and then it made it super easy because I was able to write my book in six weeks. Oh, nice. Super discipline uh, yep. every morning, two hours of writing before going to work. Started on June 1st and finished on July 15th. And uh, in January, it was in Amazon. So uh, it, it was that was one of my criteria. If I'm going to write a book, yep. it cannot drag. I'm not patient. Yep. I need to get it done and it needs to happen now. So when I found the right coach for that, yep. I was like, let's do it. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. When you look at, back over your career, what are the three things that have really driven, really contributed to your success? Oh, number one, for sure, mentorship. Finding the right mentor was, this is the number one. Uh, I feel very, very, very lucky, fortunate that I, I had that person and um, that I still have that person, actually. I still text my mentor and say, hey, what do you think about that, right? Somebody I can rely on, somebody that uh, can show me the way. And so that would that would be the, the first thing for sure. And um, the second thing is uh, being authentic, being myself, not trying to pretend to be somebody else. Uh, it's as well something I had in me. It's one of my values, authenticity. Um, and because of that, I think it really helped me. If I don't know the answer, I'm going to tell it like it is. And I'm not going to sugarcoat stuff. So yep. that's pretty much it. What's the third? Oh, the third thing that uh, helped my my uh, career. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's pretty obvious. I even didn't think about that, but... Uh, the con- continue, uh, continue, uh, how to continue always learning, uh, developing yes. yourself. Yes. Yep. So self-development, personal development, and never stop learning, never stop growing. Um, my God, if I look at my journey, oh my God, it, you would not recognize me from the first time I started working and I can look at other people and I'm like, yep, same thing they're doing, same person, same attitude, same kind of selling tools. They yep. don't want to change. So I'm all about always improving. Always. I I, I love it. Yeah, it's so important. I tell that to my kids all the time. I'm like, if you think you're done learning when you graduate college, you are sadly mistaken. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you. So you're an engineer by training. How did you transition into sales? Tell me that story. Yeah, it's pretty rare uh, to have engineering in sales, right? Um, it happened... Actually, in college, believe it or not, when I was in engineering school, actually, I I really believe that sales helped me not quit engineering school. And the reason is because I went to an engineering school called École de Technologie Supérieure, and we have to do three internships during our three years of studying. So my first internship, I did it and I was like, oh, my God, I don't think I like engineering. I'm like, I'm bored and I'm not sure it's it's fun. And I have a fun personality, not not like the detail oriented um, personality, like typical engineers. And then my second internship, I had an interview for an inside sales position. And um, the interviewer, after five minutes of discussion, says, uh, said to me, Oh, you're a salesperson. And I'm like, I'm a salesperson? Oh, <laughs> uh, I didn't know. It's yeah. like nobody never told me, even if ki- my family probably all knew that and my friends, but me, I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't know. I'm like, it's like, yeah, I can totally tell. And I was a number 15 out of 15 uh, interviewee. 
And right then, right there, he gave me his business card. And he's like, uh, you're going to be starting next week. I'm going to tell the school later, but you know now. I even didn't have to wait, go to the little computer, see, am I taken or not? He's like, no, we're, we're looking for somebody like you. No. And then I started working in sales and I was like, oh my God, this is so much fun. No. <laughs> I no. want to do this. That's awesome. And yeah. And then I finished my engineering school and my third internship. I kept going in sales. But uh, seriously, this is the best thing that happened to me to go in sales. Otherwise, I don't know what I would have been doing. Yeah. Yeah. What was the hardest thing for you to learn, the hardest lesson for you to learn those early years in sales? Oh, the importance of follow up. Hmm. And uh have, we have a tendency to kind of do the work and uh, never follow up or yes, I emailed them, right? Well, did nope. you email them again? Did you pick up the phone? Did you actually make an appointment? Did you visit them? Yes. The more in person, the more touch point, the better. And that was one of the things that um, I learned the hard way or I learned to improve on basically. Right, right. If you could go back in time, and talk to yourself as that younger salesperson and impart some wisdom in addition to follow-up. Is there anything else you would, any knowledge or lessons learned you would pass along to the younger you? Uh, yes, my emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Actually, um, the, the book talk about my story about how I change who I was to match my male counterpart, my male peers, mm -hmm. being working in the air conditioning and the construction business. Um, you know, I'm bubbly, I'm fun. And then I I had a meeting with my mentor and I sat down and he's like, Karine, uh, what's going on with you? I'm like, what do you mean what's going on with me? And he's like, well, well, what? Well, you're always mad, right? And I was like, I'm not always mad. And I really saw like the the the, the Korean and I had changed mm -hmm. because if I go to a meeting and I say something and nobody agrees or nobody think it's a good idea, and then the third person after that say the same thing and suddenly, whoa, such a good idea. And I'm like, so I started to put my guard on, being more aggressive, more tough change my attitude kind of to protect myself. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I, that would, that would be something I would change if I had to go back. I would right. not, I would keep being who I am. And it's funny because I talk about authenticity, but that's not the same. So emotional intelligence is basically how you respond, how you react to the emotions that show up. And at that time, I was not so good about that. Right. But I did learn. I learned and applied it and I changed. I even wrote a book about it. So that's awesome. That's a good thing. <laughs> that is a good thing. Yes. Um, tell me about your transition into sales leadership. Was that easy for you or was it difficult? Uh, well, I have to say that for almost 21 years, I work as a sales engineer. Mm -hmm. So I had a leader and I was always thinking, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? We should do this. And then I always had those ideas. I'm very creative. I'm very human. And I would be always frustrated because they would not happen mm -hmm. for some reason or not. And then when the opportunity presented itself about this um, VP of sales position, I was like, wow. I'm not unhappy at my old job. However, here is my chance to actually be able to implement what I've always been wanting to do. So I took it. I took it. And I'm very excited that I took it because now I can apply those tools and I can practice what I preach with my team. And I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And to tell you the truth, it's a little bit harder than I thought. Yeah. Uh, I especially um, when you find out all the personalities, yeah, right mm -hmm. in the business. So you have the engineering department, you have the production me uh, department, you have the HR, everybody has their own personalities. So now I have to deal more with this than before. 
but we did a disc personality assessment. So now everybody's aware of what's going on and who is what. And um, I love that I can actually start my sales meeting with personal development. Mm -hmm. And I can actually have something about learning in sales or in life and actually ask one person in the team to present an idea at every meeting. And this is something I wish I had in the past. And yep. now I'm like, I'm going to implement it. And actually our team likes it. So we can get, the more we get better, the better the company is. That's right. The better the customer going to be. So I love it. That's awesome. That's really great. Now you're fairly young in this, in your journey as a sales leader, correct? Yeah, it's been only a year and a half. So uh, I'm a baby. <laughs> <laughs> And that's I take you another reason we're very excited to have you on the show is because a lot of people we have they've been doing it for 20 years or whatever. I haven't really had much opportunity to talk to someone who's still at the early stages of leadership. You have a very strong history as a salesperson, but you're living this transition into leadership. And are do you have a mentor that's helping you with this process of transitioning to a leader? Uh, well, our executive VP is is kind of my mentor. And actually, that's one of the reasons why I went to work for that company. Uh, he, when you like the people you work with, it's so much easier, right? So uh, I know that uh, he always has my back. I can always go back to him if I have, uh, I don't know what to do, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, if I have question. I know he's always going to be there 24-7 and I can count on him. And this is worth millions to me. Oh, yes. So, what, what do role think? does vulnerability excuse me vulnerability in your in your uh, you know willingness to make yourself vulnerable not only to your leadership but also to your team how important is that to you as a leader oh it's super important but it's so hard oh my yes. god it's so hard imagine showing up to a company where everybody has been working there for 8 years plus and you're the newcomer and you're sup you supposedly good because they hired you right? right and you're supposed to suddenly take the company to this and the sales are going to double overnight and everybody is all excited and you have to tell in front of everybody well what are we talking about here uh i don't understand this uh can you go over this uh because people go fast right and you're like so it's hard to say it you know to kind of yeah. stop the train and say wait a second can you please explain this? And then to ask again, oh, that, that's even more tough. I, yeah. I don't like to waste anybody's time. Right. I want to make sure that I'm on top of it, uh, that I do a good job. So yeah, vulnerability is, is really, really tough. And with customers as well, right? Because right. customers are going to ask me and now I don't have the answer. Yeah. Or I may know it, but not to the point that the other person had. And then the they have to work with me or see what I mean? So yes. it's a good question. What yeah. do you think about that, Chris? I think it's critical that it goes back to your earlier comment about being authentic. Yeah. That if you're trying to hide ignorance, you know, no one's an expert in everything. And so to try to pretend that you are just sets yourself up for failure. I really believe you have to be authentic with people. You have to say, hey, you know what? I don't know the answer to that, but I will get it for you. You know, people will accept that. What they won't accept is being lied to or being misled or or fooled. Um, I just think that that's a very short-term uh, path to failure. Um, it does not take long for you to fall on your face if that's your method of operation. Yeah, it's a small world. Everybody's yes. going to find out very soon and then... Forget about it. You're going to yeah. have to change industry because people talk. <laughs> yeah, you, you have one shot to establish credibility. And uh, once you lose it, it's gone. And uh, so you, I, I'm very big on that, that uh, you always have to be authentic. You have to, um, it, it's about the long-term relationship. If you have to short-term look vulnerable to gain that long-term respect, I, I'll do that all the time. You know, it's like no problem. Um, it's easier too. I, for me, I mean, it, it wasn't easy as a young person, um, but now it's very easy for me because I know the benefits of being vulnerable and I've, I've totally bought into that. 
and I, what I see in the younger generation or somebody who's starting is they forget to leave their ego at the door. They want yes. to prove something yep. and this is where they get in trouble. So yep. especially if there is a, a problem on a job and then you have to go back, uh, you, you cannot point finger. You kind of, no. let's work on a solution. That's let's right. work together. Let me help you, yep. right? And this, this word a lot of a lot of peels that are coming in the future for you. <laughs> yeah. What was the first thing you did when you came into IR in your new role as VP of Sales? I, the first thing I did was to not try to move all the furniture in the house. Okay, so that was the first thing I really wanted to do it, and I was like, okay, Kareen. Please, I know myself. So when I took that role, I was like, you're going to have to hold it. And you, I, it's almost like I have to put a post-it note, like, hold on, hold on, wait, wait. You need to see what's going on first before you start uh, moving the furniture around. So um, that was one of the first thing, kind of observing, seeing what's going on, um, and uh, one thing I, I discussed with the team before to taking that job is I wanted to make sure that um, what got you there won't get you here, or what got you here won't get you there. So I, I wanted to make sure that if I go there, they would be willing to hear what I have to say. Otherwise, there's no point for me to go there. That's right. So this is what I did. I kind of observed then slowly, slowly. It's been a year and a half. And I'm starting finally to be able to feel like, okay, I have something to bring and actually do. It takes longer than I thought um, mm. to actually, uh, especially because I've been doing the same job for 21 years before. So I didn't right. really experience going from another job to another yeah. job, basically. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is. A, it's a big change, big change for everybody. And the, oh, it yeah. is, I think, a huge temptation to go in there, like you're saying, start redecorating or moving the furniture, as you said. Um, but you open yourself to a tremendous amount of risk when you do that. And uh, so I, I really appreciate that you you took the time to sit and listen and learn uh, before you start, you know, trying to in, uh, insert yourself or start implementing any significant changes. Yeah, it was hard. It was so hard, Chris. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's still hard. There's still things I'm like, yeah. there must be a better way. This is the way we've been doing it. I'm like, Okay, yeah. they're not ready yet. Let's wait. Yeah. <laughs> so you kind of have to recognize it. Yeah. And find other ways to bring it and having mm -hmm. maybe one-on-ones. And it's uh I'm learning. I'm really learning. Yeah. And this is what I love about it. It's yeah. it's a learning experience and I get to practice what I preach. So it's even better. Yeah, that's awesome. How do you manage expectations both? with your leadership team and then also within your team itself, how do you manage expectations? Uh, what are expectations? What, what expectation are you talking about? Well, about like, the sales like numbers or? You could, yeah, it could be like, hey, like you said earlier, we want sales to double like immediately. Um, or you have a young salesperson that says, hey, you know what? You're giving me this quota, but I'm going to double it. Man. You know, and it. how do you, because it, in a sales leadership role, you have to play both sides. It's not just down. You also have to manage up as well. Yeah. Oh, my approach is so laid back. It's so relaxed, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, I try to lead like I want to be led. Okay. So I hate micromanagement. This is the number one thing. If you want to lose me, that's it. So I want to be free. So I would rather expectation saying okay we know the numbers we have to do then off you go you have you can make your own plans about how many calls you want to do how many follow-ups how many travel you want to do how many presentation i never say anything but during our one-on-one -on -one, i discuss so what are you thinking right mm -hmm. it's it's so this is my approach it's right. really uh I, I i never like I'm never on them. I, I don't put a bar. I'm expecting them to put the bar themselves. Uh, that's that's how I see it. And um, so far, I had not have I, I didn't have any problem with that. Like I didn't have anybody who was kind of like doing nothing or mm -hmm. you kind of feel it, right? And you, 
I don't wait until it get there because I'm again, I'm very human. That's my that's my strength, I guess. So this is how I can keep up with what's going on. So that's my yep. approach. Yep. So how do you what do you do if you start seeing someone is not meeting expectations? How do you engage in that scenario? Well, I'm trying to dig in uh, the word that I would have to say is curious. Be curious. Because if you're in sales, you know that if you don't sell, you don't make money, right? right? So if they're not selling, what's the reason? And most of the time, there is other stuff behind it. And I like to use the word, the image of an iceberg. So the iceberg is, we see only 15% of the entire iceberg. Right. So my sales team, I only see that. But what's going on at home? What's going on with their health? What's going on with their, I don't know, anything else, their finance, uh, any problems that they may have that yep. can affect their job. That's right. So by being curious, by being um, vulnerable or open and have more of a human connection, not only communication, okay, because there is a big difference between communication and connection. Yep. So I really like that book from John Maxwell that says everyone, everybody communicates, few connect. Right. So that's that's what I try to do with if I see something like that. If I see a difference, I'm going to try to find out what's going on. I don't really think, oh, they're just being lazy or right. I don't go to the default negative. I'm more like, OK, what's going on behind this? Yeah. How do you use failure so you know failure is a huge part of selling um how do you leverage failure as learning opportunities um within your your team well you just said it failure is a learning opportunity so every time you fail i like to think okay what could have done differently where it went wrong um and when, when you ask me that, one particular job comes to mind that I lost. And I was very, very mad, very sad because I had been selling everything to that client. So it was almost like taken for granted, right? This is mine. Right. And then I lost it. And it's like somebody pulled a rug under me. And I was like, oh, wow, I even didn't think I could, I could lose a job to that client. Right. And um, I lost it and I was like, OK, um, I asked those questions and then I knew I did everything right. So I'm like, OK, let's move on. Let's focus on the next ones. OK, let's. And guess what? Oh, my God, this is such a great story. Um, after a year, the client called me back and he's like, we hate that machine. So we having only problems. We don't like the people, blah, blah, blah. Can you please send me a quote? Exact same thing. I got the job. We installed it and they never operate the other one and it's sitting next to it. And I was like, see, everything, <laughs> everything happened for a reason. That's right. So I, I was like, okay, he wants to go somewhere else. Good luck. He will, yeah. he will come back, right? Running. Right. And this is what he did. So uh, don't don't beat yourself too much. Sometimes it, it just yeah. it needs that to yeah. for them to understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's always been the lesson of always be selling. I've had those deals where I thought we've had them. Yeah, and so I stopped selling towards the end because I thought it was a done deal, uh -huh. and we lost the deal. And I've, I have never forgotten that. And uh, so now it's my team will be like, "Why are you still selling?" I'm like, "Because we don't have a signed contract yet." You know, until we have a signed contract, we have to keep selling, you know? So it, it's, uh, um, yeah, it's like failure. Those are the, that's where you really learn is the, on those deals you lose. Um, yeah. that's where you see change and, in, in uh, growth. Yes, absolutely. And not talk about it. Like it's sold, like we didn't get the PO yet, you that's know, right. like hold on here. Yep. We didn't get the PO, so remove this from the the number here, right? Because right. we don't have it yet. So that's right. That's I where like the follow approach. up. All that stuff comes in. You got to keep following up. You got to keep selling. Every time you talk, you got to sell, and uh, and it's not. Well, I say selling, but it's you know as you know, it's not just. It's maintaining the relationship. It's making sure, hey, 
Do you have the information you need? Is there anything else I can help you with? You know, what can I do to help move this process along for you? What are you guys, what, what are you concerned about? What are you afraid of? You know, all those questions. Um, I, so, yeah, to me, that's also the fun side of selling though, too. It's, um, I learned so much when I have those conversations with, with prospects. Yeah, I love this. I, to tell you the truth, Chris, I hate somebody who's trying to sell me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I hate salespeople in general because yeah. they're selling me. Yeah. But if they're trying to help me and having yeah. a conversation, then I'm okay. But when I experienced it, I was like, oh, no. Oh, it's the worst. I Oh God, it's like, so I would never do that to somebody, right? Yeah. It's like, I don't consider myself a salesperson. When you think about right. it, I'm just no, exactly. there. They need help. So it's yeah. going to be me or the other person. So here, I'm right yeah. here. What do you need? I will help That's you. Right. What's your problem? I will yeah. fix it. That's so, right. So yes, we're not salespeople. We're, we're helping people. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We're helpers. Yes. <laughs> yep. Um, the, uh, uh, I think every to be a sales leader and be a successful sales leader, you have to have success habits. What are your success habits? What are those things you do every day to keep yourself focused on the most important? Uh, well, um, I like to, of course, re review every day, like the opportunities and all that stuff. So that's a given. But I really believe that you need to be as strong personally to be strong professionally. So internally in your life at home, you need to be happy. Yes. And so for me, what I do is I, I, every day I have to do my exercise. Okay. So it can be a walk. It can go to the gym, whatever it is. Uh, I need to feed my brain. Okay. So it can be either a podcast during my walk. It can be reading my book. Uh, it can be reading article, whatever it is, but I need to feed my brain. I need to review the day. So every night before I go to bed, I have a little gratitude and I'm just recognize three good things that happened to me. And then I also uh, review my day, like how did I respond or today I struggle a little bit more. What happened? I try to get my sleep. Um, very important. Otherwise I cannot function. I'm, I'm zero. Uh, so it's more on a personal side than on a professional side, to tell you the truth. On the professional side, right, it's uh, it's almost like a given. You know, every day you look at your numbers, you look at opportunities, you do your emails, you reach out to people. Um, this is like a given. So for me, it's more like on the habit side, on the personal side. Do I do these every day to become a better person? Right, right. What about you? What do you do? Uh, for me, it's... Um... Exercise is number one for me. Like it just, uh, um, I have to have that that time to decompress. And I've found that exercise is the best way for that to happen. Because I could just, I, I just go and exercise and I, I clear my head. Um, I really, I listen to music and, and while I'm working out and, and uh, I just, I try to step away from everything else. And then I also, every day, try midday, I try to have at least 30 minutes where I disconnect from the business as well. And it, it's feeding my brain essentially with something totally different that's not related to the business. Um, Cause I wanna connect other parts of my brain um, and keep, make sure those are working and engage because I found usually when I'm doing that, right coming out of that, I usually have something that is like a oh. idea or something that pops into my head that fuels the rest of my day. Um, you know, so I always try to disconnect at least for 30 minutes. I can't do it every day because these days, especially with Zoom and Teams calls, you end up in so many back-to-back -back stuff. But I always try to carve out that 30 minutes midday to disconnect. Oh, good job. That's awesome. I think it's good ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, CRM, do you love it or do you hate it? Ooh, where's the drum roll? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it depends. Yeah. It depends. I'm sure you get that answer a lot, but yeah, yeah. it depends which one, right? Yeah. And do I have to use it? Or not, right? right. Is it, is, it a is, it, is it helping me or is it just something that's used as a hammer by management, um, like big brother type thing that, hey, you know, you didn't put your numbers in or whatever. 
And that's the worst, right? That is the worst. Oh my God. It's almost like the parents selling their kids. Did you oh, clean yeah. the room? Yeah. It's no, just so I will silly. clean it when I want it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I did experience uh, both. So um, previously we, we use, uh, we had CRM and what I've noticed is it's so important if that there is no gap between who pushes the CRM. So if you have like the big exec, they want the CRM to be implemented. So they push it to one layer down. But if these people are not, and they're telling you, well, it's hard because your direct supervisor is not pushing it, or you can tell they don't believe in it. It's almost right. like it's the yep. same thing. You guys, did you enter your numbers? No, okay, move on. Or don't forget to enter your numbers. Yeah. That that doesn't really got do good to me, right? No. And um, also, how much training do I get on it? Because right. if I usually it's like you have this one big day, big announcement, everybody shows up. We're gonna show you how it works, and then good luck. That's right. It's awesome. You should know how it works now. Oh my god, you should see the benefit. So where are your numbers? And now I'm struggling. It takes me more time to learn it, put my numbers, all that stuff, and I'm like, yep. meanwhile, I'm not selling. So right. it's bothering me because I need to make money. So until you prove to me that all the time and effort I'm putting in this will actually help me, then it's fine. So I think training on the CRM and also um, if the leadership is actually um, using it and showing it. So, for example, if I would go to a sales meeting and then the sales, the, the, the sales manager would, would show it on the screen, and yep. then go to the people, then yep. I'm like, wow, every week I see it. Everybody shows their number. Therefore, I kind of have to do it, right? Because yep. then I'm going to be called out in front of 50 salespeople. Yep. But if nobody does that, nobody look at it. And yep. then also, you also have the, the thing about, well, if there is one job and there is several people bidding it, I don't want my other people to know what I'm bidding. I don't want them to see right. my price. Uh, uh, so there is also this kind, I don't want to enter it because then what's going to happen. So there is several problems with the CRM, but I feel like if done right, it's such a powerful tool. I'm using it personally and I love it. It's, yeah. I can free some space in my brain about like when to call back about what's their wife's names, uh, when it was their last vacation. Uh, what is this big job that we discuss next time just by going to their name and then boom, 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 boom. I have everything. And yep. this is like wonderful. Yeah. I don't have to remind, uh, remember it. Right. Yep. So um, yes, uh, the, the long answer to your question, it depends. <laughs> That's a good answer. And, and it, it is, you had so much in there that I think as you were talking, I'm like, I hope people are really listening to what you're saying because it's so spot on that, CRM to be successful has to enable, it has to empower your sales team. Um, it can't be a heavy anchor they're dragging behind them that's slowing them down, that's keeping them from selling. It needs to help them sell. It needs to be a tool that enables them to sell more, make it easier to sell, um, to identify prospects, whatever it is. There's so many ways it can benefit you. Um, and that it gets back to having a really good why and and that why needs to come from the top. And it can't, like when we get phone calls of companies saying, um, you know, we need a new CRM, first question I ask is why? And if they say, well, my boss told me to call you, I know that's, they're gonna struggle because it's just what you said. It's like, it got passed down from the top and the person in the middle is making the phone call. I'm like, I don't really know why I'm, I want CRM. I was just told to call you. That's not gonna go well. Um, and, uh, um, it has to be strategic. It has to be aligned with your strategic goals as an organization. It has to enable execution against those goals, which almost always revenue increase in revenue is number one. Um, you know, so to me, that's what CRM is all about. So, uh, Kareen, we're at our time here on sales no. lead dog for this episode. It goes by so quickly. Come on. Um, we have to do another part two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed having you come on. Karina, if Thank people you. want to reach out and connect with you, if they want to learn more about what you do at iAir or what you do with your speaking or your coaching, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? 
Oh, the best place is LinkedIn, of course, you know, Corinne LeBlanc. And I have my own website as well. And uh, I Air, the company I work with, my, uh, myiair.com, it's our uh, website. So you can look it up there. So you ba basically have both. You can reach me in both. My photo is in both. <laughs> uh, I have all my handles there as well. The Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. So uh, you're in sales. When you're in sales, people cannot have a hard time reaching out. Otherwise, right. there is a problem. So yep. I'm everywhere. <laughs> That's awesome. So we will have all that information in our show notes for this episode. You can get that in pellercrm.com forward slash sales lead dog or where you'll get not only the show notes for, for this episode, but also all the other 100 plus episodes we have with Sales Lead Dog. So be sure to check that out. Be sure to check out uh, Corrine's book, um, How to Be Human in a Technical World. Um, there it is again. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll see that. Um, Corrine, thank you again for coming on Sales Lead Dog and welcome to the Sales Lead Dog Pack. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you're doing. You really make a difference. Well, thank you. As we end this discussion on Sales Lead Dog, be sure to subscribe to catch all our episodes. On social media, follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Watch the videos on YouTube. And you can also find our episodes on our website at impellercrm.com forward slash sales lead dog. Sales Lead Dog is supported by Impeller CRM, delivering objectively better CRM for business, guaranteed.